close to being done for the year. Got one more tanker load coming, and uh, then we'll be done. Having some problems with my pressure, so I think I got a cog strainer. I got to clean it out here in a minute once we get done pumping in. Chad, maybe 50 gallons, if that. Go slower. All right, that's good. I got on, my pressure's going outrageous. It usually runs about 30, but it was running up about 60, and I was having a hard time keeping my rate. Well, we took the strainer out because okay. we were running so many gallons, but I was wondering if there was just some gunk because this stuff gets kind of slimy. I've got a gut feeling this is going to be a good year. The farmer is the eternal optimist. We farm together as a family. If we all put our heads together, I don't know what we couldn't achieve. Hopefully we hit 90 bushel. I think we could do it. Just have healthy plants and a good return on investment. One of the worst things about farming is making a decision on planting depth. A quarter of an inch on your depth, sometimes you won't get a stain. As you can see, my pinky ring is empty, so obviously I didn't win. <laughs> With this class of guys that's in Podfathers, I mean, anyone could win. Welcome back. Season two of the Podfather. I'm Temple Rose from Chestnut Manor Farms. I uh, farm here with my family. We're excited this year. I don't want to be in second again. I've had enough of that. But anyway, we're going to try a bunch of new stuff this year. I got a couple guys helping out. Uh, maybe they can grow some better beans. We're doing a bunch of different stuff this year. Right now, today, we're planting corn. We've already planted a bunch of beans early on. We started planting soybeans around the 4th of April. And they sat in the ground for over three weeks before they popped their head up. They're up now. And then we flipped over, started planting corn. We're gonna be done. We're gonna switch the planters back over to beans and go back and try to finish up. Let me grab this to my nephew. Hello. My son, Temple's here. He's run the field cultivator with his Corey Atley Challenger tractor, you know. I'm gonna paint on the side of it a little Corey for him. Got three sons total. Alexander, you'll see him on the show. He lives and breathes farming. That's all he wants to do. So we were riding down the road the other day and they were talking about Podfather. And I said, who's your favorite guy? Little Temple was like, Corey Atley. I'm like, what? And Alexander, without fail, he was like, by far, Matt Miles. I'm like, well, why? Why can't I be, like, y'all's favorite? Like, I am your father. Right now, I guess my wife, she's running uh, Alexander all over, all over the place, trying to get the rest of the tool trucks here. She really spends a lot of time with us in the field, making dinners, all that stuff. My mother is 82 years old and still packs us lunch every day. How about that? The whole family is actually involved, everybody. So it actually, it works really well. My sons want to come in and they want to farm and I can't wait to hand it over. Alexander, he got his first farm last year. This is his first crop in year. Either one of my sons, if they were farming and I was doing something and they said, hey, give me Matt or give me Corey's number, Corey and Matt would pick up the phone and they talked to them and they would give them the information that they needed. And I tell you, you can't, you can't get any more salt of the earth people than you know all the guys really on Podfather as a group. If we all put our heads together, I don't know what we couldn't achieve. Like these guys are intelligent, like crazy, crazy good. You know, if you surround yourself with really smart, intelligent people, it makes you a better success and whatever you try to do in life. You know, one of my famous lines is, is, you know, don't ever be tradition bound. Dad was bound by what his father did. His father was bound by what his father did, so on and so forth. And I think that that's part of the biggest problem with, you know, with farming. You know, you don't change anything because 
you become so complacent, you know, I'm growing good yields, things are going very well, everybody wants to blame the hybrid. But once you get into that complacent place in your life, you know, you just don't, you're not ready to make a change and make a step backward. Every field that I go in is a test trial of some sort, whether it's a variety. Um, I don't ever plant, and both planters that are running, there's four different types of seed that are in these planters right now. But when we harvest it, we have four hybrids to compare on that individual farm all the time. Now, I really, really try hard to not become complacent. That's really tough. My name is uh, Temple Sydney Rhodes. We are uh, using this 42-foot Colsfair to rip up the ground behind the, our turbo till, freshen up the soil a little bit. It sounds like the wheat harvest is probably gonna be pretty good. I don't know about the corn or soybeans yet. It's too early to tell. I gotta get back to the cold spring so you guys can get on out of here and go find something else to do. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. I'm very fortunate that I've been working with Concept Agritech now for four years. We have 12 Concept Agritech plots out right now. Man, this is like drinking water. It does that much for you. It's uh, Friday, May 14th. Running the strip till machine, Soil Warrior. We're just about done with beans and we're just starting corn. Uh, it's been really cold here and wet. We haven't had the weather to get it in. And we've had a, the past five days, we've had some good weather. We've been working hard and long hours trying to get everything sprayed and in the ground and uh, start planting corn tomorrow. Yeah, we're close to on average when we usually plant now. I'm kind of glad I didn't get in a little early because we had some pretty damp soils and cold weather. I don't, I'm just glad we don't have anything in the ground, any corn in the ground yet. The, the problem is it mess, it's messing my rate up. See, my target's 110 and what it's actually. Hey Greg, it's Grant in West Virginia, how are you? I'm having a hard time, I've never had this problem, everything was running fine and it just started doing this. I'm having a hard time keeping my rate and my pressure is 60 and everything worked great and now something's going on. Oh, you got dirty filters in there. I'll take that uh, strainer piece out, maybe it's got a bunch of junk in it. Okay. Okay, I'll give that a try. I'm having problems here with this tractor. I don't know. Something just happened. I lost everything. Do you have any 10 amp fuses, little fuses? I need a micro mini, I need the small one. Oh my, always something. What the heck? I gotta get out and check this rate, it's not right. Hey, bring my truck up, we gotta take it strainer housing off or something. I'm, something's clogging me up. This, that one. <laughs> I know, I think that's the problem. I think I've got a clog somewhere or something. Mm -mm, I'm not getting great at all. Uh, 
Well, we've been running into some high pressure, and uh, we can't figure out what's causing it. And we checked the nozzles, and Chad just got covered. Two of them were uh, clogged and had pressure on them. And we're getting some fuel now, and hopefully what we did just fixed the problem. I'm not counting on it, but I hope. Changed a couple settings in the screen, uh, but we never had this problem. Chad jinxed me. He said we never had a problem with it. Now I got problems. It's looking good. Um, we, it was a lot of grass and heavy residue, and tried to bust some of it up, tried to smooth it up a little bit. And we're stuck all these grass cloths, but uh, soil water seems to be breaking through some of them all right and move, you know, pushing some of the trash out of the way. It's a challenge like everything. Just trying to get done. We got, I got another load coming here in a few minutes, well, about an hour, hour and a half probably. So I'm trying to get this thing going back and running because he's not gonna have anywhere to dump his load. So it's always something. Mark's back there planting them. He's got one field left and he'll be done. Uh, we also blew a fuse in the rate controller, so we lost all of our mapping and everything. So that was another problem. We had to rob a fuse out of my truck. And now we're waiting for fuel. Let's go check it. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. But on our farm, we got an average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. My name is Alexander Evans. Um, so we're out here at the Callahan farm. So what we're doing today is we're, we're spraying. Uh, we're putting on 32% nitrogen over corn that we planted uh, the past two days. Putting in some insecticide, lamb cat, some herbicide. So when I really started getting into farming, first thing I ever did was actually, I, of course I learned how to cut grass. That's the first thing I ever did. I was probably six or seven. I and mean, then it went from the grain cart. And at that time, my grandfather had his uh, Angus cattle. So next leads to next, and I was, I was uh, running silage wagons, which is actually the second thing that I learned how to do while driving the tractor. I can't get enough of it. And it's, I know dad said this before, but I mean, working with your family every day, that's, that's not work. It's just, it's doing something you love, you know, with the people you love. Yeah, so right now I just ran out, actually. So now we're getting ready to fill it back up again. Let's get to it. We just hooked up the line, which brings the solution into the tank. So now we're getting ready to start her up and let her go. See if that works. Nope. I love pumps. All right, third time's the charm. See if she comes on. Nothing. God darn it. On these pumps, there's little alligator clips which run the pump. There's a hot in the ground like everything else. Um, but uh, Sometimes they don't want to work as they should. Oh, there we go. Is it on? It's on now? All right. Hot tech stuff right here. Look at read your gowns and everything. Um, I'm going to go speed the motor up, and then we'll suck this out, and we'll be ready to go. Something's not working right now. Of course, we're having problems. We ran out of gas. Filter stopped up. It's got to be on film day, doesn't it? I mean, come on. <laughs> She goes. Now we just sit and wait. Yeah, so my last name's different. Obviously, it's not Rhodes, it's Evans. So my parents got divorced when I was, um, I don't know, I was probably two or three. Um, ever since then, it's it's been mom and Temple, and then my real father, John Evans, and Paige, which is my stepmom. 
Um, I really got in farming. Shoot, I was probably six, seven, eight. Ever since the first day I, I stepped foot on the farm, I just I couldn't get enough. Yeah, so um, yeah, definitely, it's definitely been a big year for me. I uh, I got my first farm. I got 180 acres down in Easton. I do have big, I do have big hopes for it. I really hope it turns out. Um, first year, I hope it, I hope it goes good. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we have we have big hopes. Me and T, hopefully, hopefully one day we'll take it over. I don't think I don't think Temple's ready to give up. Um, he, he's not quitting anytime soon. <laughs> but, but yeah, that definitely is, is hope for the future. Is me and T, and and um, we'll be farming this one day by ourselves. Yep. I really like watching the Podfather TV show. Um, you learn a lot, I mean, and it's cool to see farmers all across the country. We're trying to feed the world, so you know, it's just, it's, it's really awesome. It really is. Yeah, so thank you guys for coming out. Um, I'm sure you got places to be, and I do too, so I'm gonna get back to spraying. I'll see y'all. So I'm Caroline Rhodes, and we today we're at our home farm. So this is where we live. This is really the base of our operation. So every night uh, we take, you know, fixed dinner and take it out to the field. So normally we're not we're not eating at our house. We're normally eating out wherever they're harvesting. Um, and there's Temple calling to find out where I am. Um, but of course tonight, since you're here, they're all finished. So we are going to eat at the hunting lodge. So normally this is yeah, this is the spread. I try to do some vegetables. I do protein, uh, dessert. I think they know that it's a little unusual to get your food delivered to the field, so there's not a lot of complaints that happen. So, you wanna go see Blueberry and Madeline? Awesome. They are wandering around over here. My name is Madeline Rhodes. I show show cattle and sheep, and this was the second heifer I've had, and she's the nicest one ever. Hey, Phil. Blueberry. She's a little husky. She's always been a little husky, right? Which was why her name was so perfect. Even as a little teeny little heifer, she was plump. As plump as a deer bear. It's like she's walking on heels. <laughs> she does. Doesn't she look like she's walking on? She has stilettos. What are you doing, big girl? We spent a lot of time today moving down the road. We were on one big farm, then we moved to my nephew's farm. We ended up being able to quit early tonight, come home, have dinner with the whole family and with the whole crew, which was awesome. There is nothing that's normal with beans. They can be incredible um, if treated right, but we're learning and it's a learning process. There's a couple of young guys out here now that we're starting to mentor a little bit. I don't sell a service, I don't sell a, a consulting firm, I don't sell any of that. But they asked me if I would help, and um, I agreed, and I'm gonna try to help those out, and I'd like to follow them all throughout the year. Gave them a bunch of stuff that they can do because they don't understand beans either. Uh, of course, I tease them, I call them bean babies. Maybe someday this would change into something and maybe I can do something different when, you know, my sons are, you know, they're, they're taking over the business. Maybe once the farms and all, everything gets out of debt, I can let them go. Alexander's back there spraying behind me right now, Jer, uh, out behind you guys right now. They're taking that and they're, they're advancing themselves. But anyway, those are the things that we've done this year and um, that's where we're going. So it's going to be a fun year. We're going to see where this thing brings us. One of the bigger reasons this harvest has gone so much smoother is we got two Fent T9s over there. They've just been pumping the grain. They've done a great job. I've been very pleased with everything. Get an extra semi load out of your grain bin. The end zone from Farm Shop MFG allows you to play offense and rehydrate your soybeans from 10 to 13%. On a 20,000 bushel bin, that's an extra semi load added to your bottom line. Or you can play defensively to protect your grain from hot spots and mold. The end zone from Farm Shop MFG automates your grain bin's ventilation, allowing you to call the shots. Score big with the end zone from Farm Shop MFG. It's better. 
That's her. We got it. So it looks like we've got the problem resolved. Uh, I took the hoses off up at the front at the manifold, flushed them out, and Chad cleaned the, no the nozzle tips and the orifices, and two of them were clogged pretty bad. And now our rate's back to where it needs to be, and we're good to go. Got a planter coming tomorrow. I gotta start planting up at our Pennsylvania farm tomorrow. We'll start planting corn up there. Hopefully get done by Monday and come back down here and then possibly have to go back up there. I'm not sure yet. Uh, it looked like the rain was gonna come uh, Monday or Sunday, I don't know. So that could be a problem too. Yeah, these mountains, they can make a storm change in an instant. Like Chad said, he went and picked a lunch up there in Cumberland, five miles from here, and he said it was pouring the rain down. So I started farming, started 2012, but really started 2013. It's always what I've done, it's what I enjoy. And you do sometimes, or most times, you do something different every day. There's a lot of challenges and it. it it's interesting. It can be very stressful trying to manage everything, especially with the weather. Just trying to do the best we can, trying to get everything in the ground and, and try to grow a little bit each year and try to be a better store of the land. Hopefully we hit 90 bushel. I think we could do it, depending on the weather. That's the biggest problem we have, especially with sunlight and everything with the mountains and the shading it causes a big problem for us. Just have healthy plants and a good return on investment. I'd say our most limiting factor is probably the weather and timing, trying to get everything in at a good time, trying to get everything sprayed. You know, we don't have much help. Our places are kind of spread out a little bit. Our Pennsylvania farm is 55 miles away, so that takes a little bit to get to. But yeah, weather, I'd say, is our biggest challenge. We're, I mean, we get better each year. You know, that's our goal. And so, I mean, we have, we've been doing that. Temple's trying to help me out on CECs and bean yields and trying to be more efficient with them and trying to push them a little a little harder than what we have before. So I'm interested to see you know how that's gonna go. I think we'll I think we'll do pretty well. It's been nice having you guys here at the farm today. I gotta get back to work. So you guys better scramble. Thank you. I have no complaints this year. The minute you think you know it all is the minute you fail. You can't be scared of failure. My goal on soybeans is 130. Everybody else can reach the 129.9 mark. That'd be great.